Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Portal back with another CFB 25 video. In today's video, I'm going to be going over the ultimate guide to choosing your depth chart, red shirting, and exactly how to pick who you start in your roster. Now, before we get to the video, guys, as always, give this video a big thumbs up. Can we get 600 likes in this video? You guys have been killing it. I greatly appreciate it. It takes a second out of your day and it helps us out a lot. So it's the easiest way to show support. Subscribe if you're new. Hopefully we've hit 30K by now. If we haven't, see if we can get over it and of course comment down below any other things you do when assessing your roster and if you haven't already check out underdog greatest place to play fantasy sports you won't regret signing up make sure you use my code to get up to a thousand dollars on your first deposit plus a free pick which is basically a free win and free money so make sure you check it out the link will be in the comments down below as well as in the description they've been killing it with promos every promo you miss really you're just hurting yourself so make sure you do check it out but let's get into it so guys i get questions literally every single day it feels like per hour of should i start x player or B player? Should I redshirt this guy or that guy? Screenshots of two guys, who would you start? This new recruit came in, so I figured, let me make a video going over everything that goes through my mind when assessing my roster. And I'm actually going to use my online league, the one that I play in with my main team, so you can get an idea for my exact thought process behind each. So make sure you stay tuned. I'm gonna go through almost position by position and break down my strategies to an extent of how I made my depth chart decisions and go through it. So let's get into this. Let's start with my roster over here. And there's so many things to keep in mind. There's dev trait, there's their year status, there's your coaching packages. Like there's so much to keep in mind here when doing this. And I do want to note a few things when doing this. So start with the quarterback. Take a second and think about what quarterback you would start in the situation. For me, the obvious answer was Joey Coker. Now you might be wondering why. So here's the thing. I do want to preface this by saying I've come to a pretty stern conclusion on redshirting. You want to redshirt every single player that comes on your roster unless unless you quite literally have no one there like you bring in a five-star quarterback on a three-star team and he's an 82 overall and your next quarterback's a 71 start him but if the guy is a freshman and he's not your far and away best starter basically redshirt them regardless of their dev trait now the difference is people might say what if they're elite dev now here's where coker's example comes into example so hashim Ekuban, this has been my four-year starter, basically. He's been an elite quarterback, been playing great, has great stats, but Jared Coker has to take the start. Now, why is that? When looking at a quarterback, I look at a few things. Their potential, the year they're in, and can they get drafted? Keep that in mind. I have learned through playing this game, the biggest way to upgrade your players is really having players drafted ahead of them. When players get drafted, I feel like that entire depth chart below them gets a big boost as if they had learned from that guy. So you'll notice on teams, have you ever wondered like teams like Georgia, they have so many draftable players in the first two years from their regular roster. You'll notice that all players recruited in those first two years get major boosts. By year three, they're like 87, 90s without playing. That's because they have these crazy, not high 90 overalls getting drafted first round. So you want to keep a few things in mind. So for me, what I take away from here is Hashim's going to be a first rounder as a 91 overall, maybe a second. He's going to give a big boost to my quarterbacks, but he is a senior. So when looking at whether or not I should start the senior, take a look at this. He's capped. He's fully capped. Anything I earn this year XP wise will not benefit him. His physicals, his abilities. When you look at all those things, you have to take a note that he's a senior with all caps. So he has no future. This is his last year. So basically you'd be starting him just to try to win. But when you compare the guy behind him, his abilities are this close. Their abilities are super close, which means that the, and the stat wise, they're pretty close too. I know he's a 91 overall, but stat wise, you'll look through and notice the accuracies. They're not too far apart. So basically, you're choosing, do you start the higher overall or the higher ceiling? When you click on the quarterback, jo Joey Coker, you'll notice a few things. He has star dev. He's basically uncapped and he, and he has a great dev, right? And he's a freshman, a redshirt freshman. So in my opinion, in most situations, you should redshirt star and elite guys. But once their redshirt freshman season starts, especially on like a quarterback, you kind of want to get them in the lineup. Reason being is when you have an uncapped quarterback like that, he can literally become the face of the league in like two seasons if you actually play with him when you're uncapped max at max accuracy max throw power max speed a guy like that you need on the field because now if you give him another season of just sitting behind he'll get the boost from the draft but that's about it he's not going to upgrade much more so it is super important to get these players in your lineup as quickly as possible in certain situations so for me if Ashim was like an 88 and i needed like one more season to get him to like a 92 to get him drafted in the first round i'm probably playing him but I know he's gonna be drafted high because of his overall. I know he's there already. I know the abilities are close and tight. So I'm starting the guy with a much higher ceiling and keeping it moving. Now it's not always the case. For instance, this guy right here, Newton, I wouldn't start him. I don't think his abilities are close enough. He has far more bronzes and far less good mentals. 
See, Joey has a lot of good mentals, better than this guy, and close enough on the silvers. So that's one example of why I would start him over him. But if I had another guy like Newton, I don't think he's close enough, stat-wise, speed-wise, everything else-wise. And if you look at his, uh, his trait, that's with him still having star. But if you look at his caps, they're not as good as, as Coker's. His power is maxed, his accuracy is one cap, and his quickness is already capped. So I don't feel the need to start him. This is a guy that I think can just sit there. And in year three or four as a senior, if he just pops around like, oh, hey, look, he's a 90, he's a 90 overall. I can start him now. Same situation. Now here is an interesting one. Halfback. So I have two elites, elite dev halfbacks that are basically uncapped. And in my mind, they were the starters no matter what, because Church is an impact dev and he's basically capped. But when you look a little bit deeper, there's some things that running backs just absolutely need for me. So his COD is above a 90, right? If you look at him, his COD is a 92. If a halfback doesn't have above 90 COD, they can't really get those quick speed boost type cuts. That's what I've noticed at least. So for me, some a lot of halfbacks year one really aren't startable. So that's a position where it changes. Like halfbacks to me aren't really that startable until they get that plus 90 COD, unless they're a power back, but I'm talking about elusive and receiving backs here. But for me, that's too low. And thus, Church is also an 87. He could probably get to like 90, 91. So I want to actually give him one more season to be draftable at a higher round so that these guys can get their big boost. And if you look under coaching packages, there are packages to increase this XP for being drafted in the first three rounds, et cetera. So make sure you do check that out. But for me, this is a guy that I think needs one more season to be draftable at a higher level. And these are guys that I think need one more round of XP boost before they're startable. Wide receiver. Now, wide receiver is an interesting one. This is a position where I don't try to get my elites in right away for a simple reason. So Josh Carlos is an elite freshman, 86 overalls, a red shirt, elite dev, uncapped basically. This guy is going to be an absolute stud. But there is something when I look at wide receivers that is make or break, it's a deal breaker, and that's route running. Route running is so important in both offline and online leagues for a few reasons. Route running basically allows you to play, call the plays you want and throw timing routes. When they have bad route running, it leads to a lot of errors that you don't that aren't your fault. For instance, you might have a guy with like low 80 route running. You do a corner route. He may run it right one or two times, but when you have tighter coverage or he makes a bad cut or he makes slow cuts, you can't rely on them for quick for quick reads or guaranteed reads. So for me, route running is important, and you'll notice in this game, just like I said about the halfbacks, wide receivers, not all of them start with great route running. Usually your juniors, your sophomore through your seniors are the ones with good route running. So I'm always starting my best route runners. Even though he's elite dev, he has 71 medium and 72 deep. That basically means man coverage is going to box him. He's going to have a lot of issues getting off of, of man coverage. And even in zone, he's going to make slow cuts. I can't rely on that per and personally. I just can't rely on that for my team. And for that reason, I'm out on a guy like Josh Carlos right away. So I actually like to give my wide receivers more time unless they come stock with route running. Occasionally, you'll get a guy like this guy, Lineart, who's a sophomore, but as a freshman had route running in the in the high in the low 90s which was insane so that's a guy that you can start but personally for me i'm looking at route running for wide receivers 70 overall route runners can't start 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 a game unless you're playing cpu or you're playing really bad teams and you know you can kind of just stat pad then that's fine not much to say here follow the same other strategies of you know red shirt freshmen start who you can but honestly i don't find tight ends to be super op in this game from a recruiting standpoint they do they need some time to develop i typically just start my best one or my fastest one, but tight end's not something I've really had too much experience and exposure to. Go Offensive lineman. This is a position where, forget if you have elite dev, forget if you have star, you start the best available always, because when they get that draft boost, they will go ahead and give your backup lineman a big boost. You notice that your backup lineman always go, like finally become startable, right when your best guys get drafted. It's always the same pattern. I start the best ones, because lineman, line's not one that you could like stat pad. You can't start a quarterback, like a quarterback and get eight touchdowns with him. You can't exactly stat pad alignment, and honestly, it's going to make it much harder to play the game if you start a 75 overall freshman with elite dev because he has good abilities and you're like, oh, I want to build him. Linemen, start the best guys always, redshirt the rest, make them wait their turn. It's kind of like that in real life. It's like linemen always wait their turn. That's the best way. They need experience. Like You can't start a low 80s freshman because he, ha he has 79 pass blocking and 60 run blocking. You just can't do that. It's not It's not going to work. It's going to make it very tough to play the game in a game where line is very important. So that's how I recommend following all the line. Ends are a little bit different, although always redshirt them. But honestly, like a guy like this, who I really love is Ramsey. 
a, a lot of these linemen that you can get like the elite ones start with platinum quick jump or gold quick jump these are guys that i want on the field the moment after the red shirt season so graves is actually better than ramsey but that gold quick jump which is the most important ability if they have that i'm starting them right after their freshman red shirt season especially if they have elite dead because in this game pass rush does really well if you have a quick jump if you have a quick jump on one of these players or pocket disruptor any of these good abilities and you can get them on the field in their rush your freshman season you'll notice crazy crazy gains for these players because they're just gonna get so many stats sacks are easy to come by in this game tack for loss are easy to come by get your players with elite dev star dev quick jump in the lineup as quickly as possible a guy like this with no abilities if you need a stop gap or a bridge guy sure start him but i'm putting in the younger guy 10 out of 10 times because you need to get those you need to get those trenches built up and that's very important to do and that just goes to show with this guy right here by the way that, that applies for the whole line d tackle and right end now d tackle i have a slight a slight differential here i actually do like starting the best available even though i have a bunch of five star guys down here freshmen you don't want to start a bad d tackle they're, they're they could be slower they can have bad block shit and a back block a bad block shit d tackle just gets gashed in the run game in my opinion i start best available always I basically treat D-Tackle like O-Line. Start the best available, make the other guys earn their way into the lineup. Linebackers. Linebackers is a bit different because you kind of can stat pad them, like the pass coverage ones, right? Your stand-up backers, in my opinion, you want to get the guys with the best dev and the best zone in there early. So Joel Rich was a guy that I got in the lineup when he was an 82 overall. He wasn't the best available, but he had 94 speed, good zone, and I think a star dev, right? So that's a guy that you want in there as soon as possible. So for linebackers, and you want a user them, so the one that you do start, right? You might have like your 88 junior in there, but if you start a sophomore or a freshman that has good speed, you want to user him. So just keep that in mind. If you are going to start one, and I would with a good dev, make sure that you are using them to make sure you can actually get sacks and, and fumbles and you can get strip sacks and you can get interceptions with them so you can build them quickly. Now, edge rushers, great example. Holiday was a guy that I started right off the rip as a freshman. I probably should have redshirted him, but this was a few seasons ago. He's the guy that right off rip went out right up to 90 overall because sacks are so easy to come by in this game that if you can get a guy, he came with plat and quick jump by getting him in the lineup early. I was essentially able to get him a ton of stats right off his right off rip and he blew up to a 90 overall. That is why it's so important to get your early edge rushers in because then I've now had a 90 overall edge rusher for four years. If you wait their turn and you don't let them build up early, you might not get one to their senior year and you elite rushers are so important in this game. So make sure you are taking advantage of that. Cornerbacks always start the best ones let them wait their turn nothing's worse like you can have a 99 speed corner who is elite dev and he's a 79 overall if they have bad man coverage or bad zone they will play like trash make sure you get your best guys in there unless you have such slow corners and you need some fast ones you can sneak them in there but for me i make corners wait their turn it's kind of like wide receivers and kind of like o-line when they have bad route running or bad coverage or bad blocking you notice it like quarterback you can you can get away with a bad quarterback and stat pad them and make it work but you can't make a bad cornerback work you're not using them they're just playing on their own you will get gashed start the best ones safety i like to do two things one safety is my best guy my best zone guy my best ability guy he can just rock out and do his thing my other one is a younger guy that might not have as good of abilities or might not have good zone but i user him and that's how i kind of handle my, my safeties as a whole when choosing who's going to play but guys that's basically it for the depth chart and how i handle this that should give you a good idea of each position and kind of what to think about when choosing the position that you're going to actually start and when you're going to start a recruit or you're going to bench a guy that should give you some good ideas obviously always factor abilities into it but when they're freshmen it's just red shirt when there's certain positions it's just wait your turn abilities do play a role when factoring the best available if you have two guards and they both have 90 plus ratings and they both have 90 plus pass blocking but one has a great ability one doesn't you start the guy with the abilities and that goes across the board if you have a safety with great abilities, but he's 82 speed, the other one's 90 plus, you probably start the 90 speed guy if they're both rated good and so on and so forth. But basically for the most part in CFB, start best available unless they're positions that you can kind of stat pad and they don't impact the way your game's going to be played like a quarterback or a running back. Those are guys you can kind of just sneak in there, but just be vigilant, make the right decision. Still feel free to ask me. I just thought this might give you some more insight into my thought process on how I pick positions and how I bench who and how I start who. But there's really only a few positions that I think you, could, you should force freshman guys into or redshirt freshman guys into. The rest should all wait their turn just for the sake of the draft boost. And just one last example here of how important the draft boost is. When you start a guy early like Ramsey for four years, he hasn't gotten a draft boost because no, I had no good end above him. So while everyone else's ends are being boosted really crazy, Ramsey's having elite seasons, like defense player of the year seasons, and he has not gotten a huge boost with elite dev because there's no one above him to be drafted and given that boost. 
So keep that in mind when starting a freshman and not starting, let's say, like I said, the quarterback position right here. This one works because if I start Coker, I know Hashimi's about to be drafted and Coker will get that boost. But if I had no quarterback that was going to be drafted and I started Coker at an 81, it would take way longer because I have no one to be drafted. So in some cases, you may hurt a player by starting them too early because you should have just built the guy above them like Church right here. Venable will take a while to grow. But if I start Church one more year, give Venable his red shirt, get Church drafted, then I get that big boost and now I'm off to the races and it pretty much gets him up to speed. But guys, that's about it. I hope you guys did enjoy. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on Twitter. Comment down below. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up. 600 likes if possible. Make sure to check out our dog. Link will be down below in the description and in the comments. Thank you. I'm out. Peace.